Hi, I'm Chad Miller. I'm a course author with Linux Academy. We are out here at Mills Pond, which is a little park in North Austin near where I live. Now, I'm a course author with Linux Academy and Cloud Assessments, and this is where I come to think because it's so pretty out here. Uh, I love Austin. I love the fact that there are so many parks out here. I've been doing technical training for 25 years, and the downside of that is I didn't get to spend a lot of time at home. I would fly out on a Monday and fly back home uh, on a Friday night, so I didn't get a lot of chances to really explore Austin. So one of my favorite things about working for Linux Academy is the opportunity to work really hard, uh, but still get to rediscover my hometown. I've been everywhere doing this stuff, uh, teaching. I've uh, been on five of the seven continents, uh, 49 of the 50 states. Um, I've, I've really been to a lot of different places and seen a lot of different sites. Uh, my wife likes it better that I'm here. Uh, I like it better that I'm here and uh, just look at that view. Look, learning highly technical stuff is really, really hard. And I'm really happy that I kind of have a, a, a knack for helping people learn stuff that's really hard. So uh, that's why I'm glad I work at Linux Academy, uh, because with my 25 years of experience, I can get in there and help you remember stuff. I'll do anything to help you remember uh, all these technical details that you need to remember for your certifications. I'll teach anything to anybody. I'll, I'll teach Kubernetes to a duck if I have to. No, you got to get out of VMs. VMs are not the way to go. You want to use Docker and you want to use Kubernetes to control them. Stop. Dang, he is grabbing meat now. Okay. I will. I, I will get my. I will get my African gray parrot on you. So I'm a huge computer nerd. So I have all the regular computer nerd hobbies like video games and I fly drones. But also, not a lot of people do this. But I also keep bees. And I notice there are a lot of bees over here on these flowers, like that little lady right there. Yeah, I keep my own bees. In fact, we're so close to my house, I'm wondering if these aren't maybe my honeybees that are over here gathering nectar here at the end of the season. And if you want, maybe we can go take a look at my bees in just a little while. inspection we're going to start off we're just going to smoke around the entrance kind of get them alerted to our presence now it's been a while since I've opened the hive so they might have glued this lid down pretty well so let's see yep the whole thing come up come on That's not a good sign. Oh, there's one. Hello. So this is their honey that's glued it down. No, this is pyropolis. Whoa, come get a look at this. A lot of die off in there. Ooh. I hope everything's okay. They have a feeder over here. It's an awful lot of die off though. So the hive is actually from here to here. We're gonna open it up and see if... Is this a significant number that we're seeing here? That's fairly significant. It might be normal fall die off. But let's see how they're doing. I'll, I'll know a lot better once I open this side. So that's propolis. And they make that glue out of tree sap. And they use it to stick everything together. That is cool looking. So, 
this is not a good sign. That's a brand that's fairly new, fairly new comb, but let's take it out and see what's going on in here if we can figure that out. So yeah, so that's some honeycomb right there. It's been all built up, but I haven't put anything in it yet. So what is that? What are you expecting to see typically? Uh, this time of year, that's about what I'm expecting to see. We are starting to see more population in here now. So let's see how it's going. Man, they've really glued it down. So that, that just fell off, was a dead hive beetle, which is the best kind of hive beetle. There are entire eco, there's an entire ecosystem that we're breaking into here. I mean, much like your body is an entire ecosystem, they're storing pollen in this one, I was wrong. And there's a hive beetle right there. So what exactly is a hive beetle? Is that a good thing you said? No. Oh. <laughs> they live in the hive and they, they're parasites on the hive, basically. So I don't know if the queen left a day or so ago. It couldn't have been too long ago, but I'm not seeing any fresh eggs or fresh capped larvae or anything. So I'm gonna change my estimate way down. I told you 10,000 bees. Oh no. No, what is this? That. Oh, yeah, we've been infested by um, by wax moths and uh, and hive beetles pretty bad and they couldn't defend against it. So you see this spider webby stuff? Mm -hmm. That's a uh, wax moth, which means that probably there's a bunch of wax moth larvae in there that are gonna eat all this wax, which is too bad. I'll need to come back out here and take a bunch of this and freeze it. But this is breaking my heart right here. So yeah, they got decimated it looks like. But I checked, I mean, I looked at the hive entrance the other day, just three or four days ago, and there were a lot of bees hanging out. So this just happened in the last day or so. They abandoned. So the, the dark color there in that, what uh -huh. is that? Uh, that's just a, a, a well-used comb. They used this a lot of times. Lots of babies were born in there and came out. Uh, when a, when a uh, bee egg hatches, it turns into uh, a pupa, and that pupa lasts for about three days, and then it begins uh, to become a larva. And that larva spins a small, tiny cocoon around itself, and the top is capped off and it pupates and goes through that phase and then emerges as a fully adult bee. Well, when it fully emerges as an adult bee, it leaves behind that cocoon in the cell. And those cocoons, one after another, get left behind and gradually will turn the comb black. There's nothing wrong with that comb. It's perfectly fine. It can be uh, refined and uh, it will look just beautiful yellow once it's refined. Well, I mean, the queen's obviously not here. I mean, I have not seen a single sealed cell, which is good because these aren't the native Texas Africanized bees, but the sweet, gentle Tennessee bees. So I don't feel bad about releasing them into the, into the area. And that is my very sad beehive today. So when I say I keep bees, I, I mean, I, I, I keep this box in my backyard and sometimes there are bees in them. And you can see, we do have some bees still cleaning up, but not a full hive like I'd hoped. But that's okay, because it's November right now when we're shooting this. And November is bee ordering season, so I can get online and order my bees for March. And that was a feeder, and in the hive feeder had sugar water in it. You put it in the hive because honeybees have this really bad habit of robbing. So if I had it, say, over here, they would still find it and they would still drink from it, but then they would try and find other easy sources of food. And if they found, say, another beehive, they would go into that beehive and rob it of honey. And that is a bad habit to get started because it's really hard to get them to stop doing it. So just the fact that that's in their sort of, in their In area. their area, yeah. Rick's in here braving. I got this whole suit on it. Rick's just over there, just bare as can be. Yeah, but there are like eight bees. <laughs> <laughs>